Hi folks, I've just been out on a walk up onto the fields at the back there and um, I've just seen something that's really made me think and it's to, it's to do with the uh, part of the word that uh, I was looking at yesterday in Deuteronomy. I just really feel like the Lord has spoke to me but just let me read you this word again. When you besiege a city for a long time while making war against it to take it, you shall not destroy its trees by wielding an axe against them. If you can eat of them, do not cut them down to use in the siege. For the tree of the field is man's food. Only the trees which you know are not trees for food you may destroy and cut down to build siege works against the city that makes war with you until it's subdued. Now, when I was looking at that yesterday as part of the, the message that we were looking at, I don't know whether you ever get this, but you look at something and you think, the Lord's trying to tell me something here, but I don't know what it is. Um, anyway, I think I'm, I'm beginning to understand it a bit more. So I'm just doing this very quick upload. I used to go five times a, a week up to the cloud, which is our local hill, to walk the dog. I had a particular place in the woods that I, there was a, a log that was on the floor that I would sit there. The dog would go and play. I'd pray. And that's we we had this, you know, thing that we would do every day um, with the dog. And they've been cutting down a lot of trees up at the cloud and they've made those kind of that pathway with the with the with the logs <clears throat> now i noticed one day when i was going through the woods that certain trees had been marked out there's a, there was a little red dot on them and it, and it never nothing ever uh i didn't really make a connection and because i always just go through there praying and after a few days of going through there it was actually when i was walking through with mandy i saw these red dots and i thought Oh, it was when this coronavirus first, really first broke out. I think I'd just come, not that long, been out of hospital. We're walking through and I saw these red dots and I suddenly realised that these red dots were put on the trees for the ones that had been designated to be chopped down. So then I looked on the floor at the trees which were on the floor, which had been felled and they had red dots on them. So clearly... They, they'd been marked out. Um, and these trees that had been marked out, at first it looked like they were random trees that had been marked out, but it would seem that the trees that had been marked out were the ones that were not in particularly good condition. And they'd been marked out for somebody to come along and lob them down, and then they would just make, uh, they'd use them for the path. Now, they've closed the cloud down now, so we can't go up there anymore. So now we go at the back. There's a field at the back of here, which the, the guy that used to own this land actually owns those fields, believe it or not. Anyway, so for the last two weeks, we've been walking on those fields. So I go on, this, I go on the field today, and I'm, I'm walking through the field, and... I can see that there's a farmer on the field and he's doing something. So I've got the dog and our dog is well trained. She's a, she is no trouble at all. And I'm walking down the field. This big farmer says to me, you do realise there's no access on this field. Now, bearing in mind, I've lived here all my life, practically, apart from six months in Bournemouth, I oh know, two years in Winsford, but all my life I lived here. I'm thinking, no access. I have walked on this field for the last 40 years. When we were kids, we used to play on that field. We used to make dens in the woods. And now he's telling me there's no access. So I didn't say anything. And I got closer. And he said it again. And I just sort of looked at him. And then he said, I'm not trying to be funny. And I said, I know you're not trying to be funny. It's okay. And I walked on. I went on my walk. And as you go round, what happens is on the fields, you get to a part where they've cleared out two or three fields and getting them ready to put 300 houses on. 
So I, I use that now as part of the walk. I go through the fence and just have a look and just use the whole thing as a, as a time to pray. So I'm walking around on all this new building ground, which there's no builders on anymore because of the coronavirus. This is, all work has stopped. And there's this great big oak tree in the middle of where all these houses are going to be. And it's totally fenced off. And I went to have a look at it and what did it say? Do not cut down. This tree is preserved. And it's preserved because it's a classic oak tree in tip-top condition. And I looked and I thought, whoa, I got a little bit of a shiver down my spine and I started to think about Deuteronomy, where God said you are not to cut down the trees that bear fruit. Anyway, I carried on walking around and it was clear where the builders had just ripped down all the trees that weren't in their eyes, they were worthless trees. They'd just been ripped out. And there's a whole pile of roots where they just ripped them out by the roots and they were piled up, just trees that they disregarded. But there's this one oak tree in the middle with a great big fence around it that says, do not cut down, this is preserved. And then there's a hedgerow, which all the birds have their nests in, which they, they also are not allowed to touch because there's life in there. And I thought, I really felt the Lord speak to me about this time that we're moving into. Anyway, I f finish off the war and I'm going through the fields and I said to the Lord, now with me, when, I, when, when, when the Holy Spirit comes on me, I always get tingles in the tips of my fingers. I know when I can feel the Holy Spirit, I can feel the tingle in the tips of my fingers and I could feel me t my fingers start to tingle. And I thought, I've got to give this farmer who told me earlier on, you're not to come this way, I've got to give him the gospel. So I'm walking to this farmer, he's a, he's a fairly big youth, and he's with his son and they're digging this stuff out. So I said, Lord, give me a word, yeah, help me. And I, anyway, I, I walked up to him and said, so what exactly are you doing now then? And he told me what he was doing. And he said he'd got no choice but to put cattle on there. I thought, that's ridiculous that he's got no choice because these fields have been like this for a long, long time. Anyway, that's, but that's beside the point. And I said to him, you know, if everybody just looks after themselves at this time, we are going to end up in a real mess. And he said, oh, no, 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 I'm not. That. I said, okay. I said, but... Do, do you mind me saying to you that um, that's it? I told I told him that where I lived and that the guy that owns this land or owned this land owned those fields, and so suddenly he knew who I was. He knew I'd been self isolating. He says, "I've only just been talking about you this morning. I don't know this guy from Adam." But he says, I was only talking about you this morning, I self-isolating in the camper van. So I said, look, I know this sounds like a, a funny thing to say, but you're going to die one day. And I, I gave him the gospel and I, I was very direct, but I also told him how much Jesus loves him. And he told me that it's OK because he's a good person. I said, you're not a good person. He says, I am a good person. I said, have you kept the Ten Commandments? He said, yes, I've kept the toe. I said, have you ever stolen before? He said, no, I've never stolen before. I said, have you ever lied before? He said, yeah, I've lied. He said, well, you, you're not a good person then. You're not good enough. And that's why I cried. Anyway, I gave him the gospel. And I'm walking back home and thinking, the Lord's speaking here. He's speaking about those that are bearing fruit that are going to be protected. I'm going to give you some scriptures. And, I, and you, can, you can make of this what you will. But I just feel as though the Lord's trying to tell us something. Psalm 1, good place to start. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, 
nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. You know what's coming. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. What did God command the children of Israel when they were, to, when they were moving in judgment on a nation? What did he say to them? Do not harm the trees that bear fruit. I'll give you another example. Psalm 52 verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Again, another reference to the, God's people being like green olive trees, fruitful trees. Here's another one. Psalm 92. Psalm 92 verse 12 to 15. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in the, in the old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. I wonder if the Lord's saying something at this time. I go up to the cloud and there's marks on trees that are designated to be cut down. I end up going on the back field and there's great big um, fence round an oak tree and it's that they're commanded to leave alone. And a hedgerow that's full of birds that they're commanded to leave alone. Here's another um, scripture. Um, Psalm 11 verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. Now that's how Hebrew poetry works. And... Um, you have the lighter and you have the heavier. So it likens the fruit of the righteous as a tree of life. That's the first part. The second part is say, he who wins souls is wise. In other words, the, tr the fruit bearing tree is a soul winning person. And the command of Deuteronomy is, do not harm the fruit bearing trees. Here's another one, Isaiah 61, we all know it, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and they sh uh, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. There's no doubt in the scriptures that people are likened to fruit-bearing trees. And the command of Deuteronomy is that the fruit-bearing trees in a time of judgment are to be left. How interesting. Like I say, I went up to the cloud, red marks on the trees that were designated to be cut down. I go round up the Tolash Avenue and where all the, where all the um, 300 houses are, are but even, even though they're, they're cutting everything down there to make way for 300 houses, there's this beautiful flourishing oak tree in the middle with a fence around it saying, leave this one alone. Now then, what does, what does John chapter 15 say? Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. He says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. And it, of course he goes on to say, apart from me you can do nothing. So Jesus explains to us how we bear fruit. We can only bear fruit when we are absolutely connected into Jesus. Now Paul, the apostle in Galatians chapter 5, shows us how we know when somebody's connected into the vine. 
he shows us what that fruit actually looks like. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He says, against such, there is no law. This is how we know whether that a tree is bearing fruit. This is the fruit. This is the fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm walking through these fields and I can really sense the Lord saying, there's a bad wind that's about to blow. There is a bad wind that's about to blow and you must be bearing fruit. And what came to us as I was walking along, this may sound like a really random thing to say, but what came to me as I was walking along is, when the, Jew, when the Jewish people were taken out of the trains in the death camps, they were asked whether they had a trade or not. And those which were of use were spared. And those that were not of use were killed. And God, I believe, is looking at his church. And that's what John 15 is all about. When I say church now, I'm talking about the visible church. I'm talking about, I'm broad, broadly speaking, the church. You know, he's looking at his church. If you understand the seven letters to the seven churches, there is an awful lot of problems in those churches. And Jesus speaks very um, bluntly into the situations and many of the people in those churches were not bearing fruit and he says I'm going to come to you Jesus is looking to see whether we are bearing fruit and he, he's going to put protection around us he's going to put protection around us I personally believe we can all go through seasons where we're not bearing fruit. We can. But this is a season that we're going into now where we need to show the fruit of the Spirit. This is not a time to be easily offended. You know, <laughs> this time that we're living in, it's so easy to be offended at another Christian. But what's the point? That's crazy. We need to show patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. We need to be bearing fruit. This is not a time to say, I've had enough, me. No, this is not a time for that. Let me show you the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, Sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to say... But the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy. And when people say, I'm following the Lord, I'm following the Lord, but I don't want anything to do with the people of God. I have explained this so many times in this last year, that a Christian is not just to love vertically. I love God and that's it, and that's me done. The cross was, there were two parts of the cross, the vertical beam and the horizontal beam. And unless we love one another and show love to one another and patience with one another, unless we put up with one another in love, we're not really displaying fruit. Love is both vertical and horizontal. That's what love is, vertical and horizontal. That's how we know that we're bearing fruit. 
That's how we know that we're bearing fruit. The fruit of the Spirit here, if you look at it, it really, it's all aimed horizontally. Friends, this is the time for us to show off our branches, to show off the fruit that we have. And it's hard because we're all self-isolated. We can't go and visit somebody or go here or physically go there. But let's make sure that we're praying for one another. Let's make sure that we are, we are, as the Bible says, putting up with one another in love. Let's make sure that we're making room for one another's faults because we've all got them. Now let me go back to Deuteronomy. God said to the, pe to the people of God, do not cut down good trees. Now there's a variety of trees, a variety of trees. You know, an orange tree is not like an apple tree. And a banana tree is not like a, a, a vine. There's all kinds of trees. And the command isn't just for one kind of tree. It's any fruit-bearing tree we're not to cut down. And I just believe the Lord is saying at this time, and this is, this is applicable to me as much as anybody else, this is not a time to go cutting away at this church just because they're producing bananas and not pears. And every ch it's true that every church, I'm talking about good churches now, every church does have its own flavour. Some churches are geared up for the homeless. Some churches are geared up to win souls for the lost. Some churches are geared up more pastorally. Some churches are geared up more prophetically. Some churches are geared up with a kind of a, a more of a teaching ministry. Some churches are geared up, if you like, for kind of like street pastory stuff. Or some churches are geared up more for worship. And I know we sh they, sh they shouldn't be like that, but it is like that. But as long as we're bearing fruit, we should not be welding the axe at one another. Those, ch those churches, those those trees should be left to stand because we're gonna, we are going to need one another's giftings. As we move into an unprecedented time, we are going to need one another's giftings like never before. Now, I was speaking to somebody earlier on and we, we're both coming at the same thing from maybe a slightly different angle, but I believe that the Spirit of God was saying the same thing to us, that things are going to change the way that we do church is going to change. And I don't quite know how it's going to end up, but it's going to change. And the, the last thing that God wants us to do is to start to cut down fruit bearing trees. They need to stand. We need to stand. And we need to show the world that there, there, there is fruit. There is life. And there are trees which are designated to be cut down. And any tree, and I'm talking about the world now, and I just want to say in closing, if you don't know Christ as Lord and Saviour, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Saviour, whatever you think of yourself, however you see yourself, you need to understand that without Christ cleaning you up, and taking away the disease in your tree. You are a bad tree. And there is a mark on you to be cut down. And unless you allow Christ to take that disease called sin out of you. You will be cut down. And it says in Ecclesiastes. Wherever the tree falls there it will lie. And if you're cut down without Christ. Your tree will lie in hell. Forever. Forever. We need to be bearing fruit. The cross was the most fruit bearing tree that has ever been. It was a picture of the vine. The blood of the grapes dripping from his body. There was never a tree that bore fruit like the cross. And the blood of Christ dripping liquid love for the world. And as Carmen said in that amazing song, this blood is for you. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Saviour, whatever you think of yourself, I promise you, you're not good enough. 
you're not good enough. You may say, well, I'm a good person. You, you, you might be a really nice person. You might be a better person than me. But are you fit for heaven? Because nobody's fit for heaven until they've been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And until that time, until Christ has taken out the disease from your tree, your tree has been marked for destruction. This is not a time to mess about, friends. Only those trees that are bearing fruit have been marked out for preservation. I hope this makes sense to people. It came to me as I just went out for a walk. God bless you. Take care in Jesus' name.